What's going on you guys? My name is Zach Hartley and in this video I'm going to break down for you the up and coming Airbnb IPO. I just finished reviewing all 300 pages of their IPO documents and in this video I'm going to sum it all up for you so here we go. Okay, first of all, this is all just my opinion. Do your own research, and this video is for entertainment purposes only. However, I'm sure that you have heard of Airbnb. They're the home slash room rental company. They're the platform where you can rent out your spare room, your house, your vacation property, whatever it is, you can rent it out. Somebody can come and stay there, and they will pay you a service fee. They were planning to IPO earlier this year, but it was postponed due to COVID, and they have not set a price for their up-and-coming IPO yet. However, if you want to review any of the documents where I gathered this information from, there is a link down below in the description description. Now buying into Airbnb, they're currently looking to raise $3 billion and you actually have three different ways that you can buy into it. Number one is buying in through your brokerage. When Airbnb says we need to raise $3 billion, they issue their shares to different brokerages and hopefully those brokerages can sell them to their traders. What that means is that you have to ask your brokerage or get onto their program to buy into that IPO. Now this can be tricky because a lot of brokerages have specific minimums or thresholds that you have to meet in order to get access to that. So you definitely need to look into that, but that is usually the best way to get into the IPO. If you can't get in that way, you can also buy an IPO ETF. What this is, is a group of companies that have recently IPO'd, and when you buy that ETF, you get the entire group, and when Airbnb IPOs, they will buy some of Airbnb, and so you get diversification because you're holding multiple companies, but you also get exposure to Airbnb without having to go through the IPO. So that is one option. And the last option is to actually just wait for the IPO and buy it on day one. Be there when the market opens, be there a couple minutes after, and get ready to place your order and actually get in on the stock on the first day that is also an option now if you guys are interested in learning more about stocks i do have a free course it is hosted on skillshare and it has over nine hours of content on it and when you sign up for skillshare you get a two-week free trial which means if you can do the full course which means if you can do the full course in under two weeks you get the entire thing for free you cancel your subscription I think after that, it's like $12 per month, and I've had over 640 students go through my course, over 77,000 minutes watched, and there's 31 reviews for you to check out. So if you're interested in learning more about the stock market or just how to trade and how to build your portfolio, definitely check out my course. It is linked down below in the description, and it's totally free. Now let's jump into the Airbnb financials. So this is the income statement, and as you can see, it's spread out over 2017, 2018, 2019, and then the nine months ended 2019 and 2020. And unfortunately, 2020 has been a very rough year for Airbnb, largely due to COVID and the pandemic. So you can see here, they had absolutely amazing growth. 2.5 billion, 3.6 billion, 4.8 billion. That is phenomenal, phenomenal growth. About 25% there year over year, and that is amazing for a billion dollar company like this. It's really, really impressive. However, the nine months ended September 30th, 2020 is much lower than it was in 2019 and that means that COVID has had a significant impact on us. We will not be posting higher numbers in 2020 than we were in 2019 and that's a little unfortunate because it kind of disrupts the growth here which was actually looking just so so beautiful. So good growth long term. COVID has had a major impact and the company doesn't actually make any money yet. They've operated at net losses every year so far but that's okay. That's sort of what you expect from a tech company growing at 25% per year especially Putting up these numbers i'm not worried about them losing less than a billion dollars when they're putting up four or five a year now, when we look at the quarterly performance, this is basically their nights and experiences booked. And as you can see from 2017 to basically 2019 Q3, it was a very nice smooth increase from 44 to 85 million, almost doubling in a matter of two years, which is absolutely phenomenal. And then you can see Q4 2019 wasn't great, Q1, and then Q2 2020 is where everything just collapsed on them. It was absolutely terrible. They went from 85.9 million bookings down to 28, which is absolutely just terrible, but it was mostly caused by COVID. It wasn't caused by anything that Airbnb did. They didn't change their business model. They didn't piss anybody off. They didn't do anything different. It was just people weren't going to hotels. People weren't booking these different things like what Airbnb offers and, and it wasn't really their fault. So it's definitely a tough card to be dealt, especially because this is right where they were planning to IPO. Luckily, they've had a nice little recovery now. We'll see how Q4 does, but definitely interesting to see. Now, when we look at their balance sheet, it's actually a really nice balance sheet to look at. As you can see, their cash and cash equivalents has steadily, steadily increased. And even as of September 30th, 2020, which is assumably, presumably a hard time for them, they had more cash and cash equivalents than they had ever had before, which is really, really nice to see. Now, their liabilities is also really interesting because their total liabilities is just funds payable and amounts payable to customers. So I assume this is deposits 
and people that they actually have to pay for the services, whatever it is. But this is a super, super clean balance sheet because there's almost no liabilities on here. This is literally just deposits for their customers, which is really, really quite amazing to see. This is a super, super clean balance sheet. And it looks really good to me in my opinion because the fact that they have more cash right now than they had at the end of 2019 just tells me that somebody is managing their cash well and managing these finances properly and I really like to see that. Now when it comes to valuation, we're gonna compare Airbnb to two other companies right now. The first one's gonna be Expedia Group. This is a company that's still in the same space but a little bit more on the tech side. Next, we're gonna compare it to Marriott. Now Airbnb, if you extend their revenue out for this year, I'm aiming for around somewhere between 3.5 and 3.6 billion in revenue. I'm sure it might be a little bit more than that depending on how the holiday day goes but Previous to this, they were experiencing a 25% year over year growth. That was before COVID. They were not yet profitable. However, they have a great balance sheet. So that's what we're looking at for Airbnb. And that's what we have to put a valuation on. Now, when we compare it to Expedia, they had $9 billion in revenue, much slower growth, four to 5% net profit. So they are making a little bit of money, but they have a ton of debt and they only have a current ratio of 1.2. They are currently worth $17.4 billion. So sort of interesting, a little bit tough to compare when we compared to Marriott, you get a little bit better comparables, but it's still not great. Marriott does 13.7 billion in revenue. However, they are not growing at all. Their revenue has been basically zero growth over the last two or three years. It is almost negligible and it's not very impressive at all, but they are generating about five to 10% net profit, depending on the year that you look at. They are at least making money, which is really nice to see. However, their balance sheet is absolutely terrible. They have more long-term and short-term liabilities than they do assets, and that's why they have a point 0.59 current ratio so a little bit worrisome if I was the management team looking at that balance sheet I wouldn't feel super confident in it right now however the company's still worth 39 billion dollars which is really quite a lot of money especially when you compare it to the revenue that they're bringing in and how much they uh, they generate in profit I would be worried if I was a Marriott Shoal shareholder right now now, after looking at both of those, when we look at the valuation of Airbnb, their last appraisal was at $21 billion. They also raised money at $18 billion on their last round. And as of the end of this IPO, so post IPO, they will have 9.2 million shares outstanding. And that gives them a price of $23.33 per share at a valuation of $21 billion. Now, with everything going on in COVID and especially the vaccine news that has come out recently, I think the stock is going to be higher than 23.33 or at least $21 billion, depending on how they do it. I think it's going to be valued higher than $21 billion. I think it's gonna be in the 30 to $40 billion range just because of the success we've had with the COVID announcements recently. And if that continues and we see more confidence in people's ability to travel, maybe next year or two years from now, I think Airbnb is going to be the most well-positioned company in that entire space because what COVID is going to do is it's basically going to take out all of the weak and anybody with bad balance sheets and anybody that can't afford the operational expenses to just exist until COVID is over. They are going to crumble. They are going to fall and everybody else is going to go to Airbnb because they offer lower prices and they offer a better service. Now, in my opinion, I like the company and I like the business model. Everything about this idea of the sharing economy and running a platform with both sides where you're charging both sides, it's absolutely amazing. Everything about it is good. However, they are extremely, extremely susceptible to COVID and vaccine news. What I mean by that is if we see continued success on the vaccine front and more and more people are taking it and it's working, we are gonna see Airbnb shoot up because I think more and more people are going to start traveling and staying at different places and Airbnb is the number one place for that. However, if COVID continues to get worse and we go into more and more lockdowns and things get worse and worse, I think people are going to be traveling less and less. And I think Airbnb could have a very difficult time. However, I think their competition is going to have an even more difficult time because of the overhead in comparative business models. And so I still like Airbnb over the long term. If COVID continues to get worse, maybe I don't like it over the short term, but the long term, I really like it. And that's why I will likely be holding it long term. I am probably going to get in on the IPO and we will see how it goes, but it will probably be a very long-term hold for me. Now, if you guys get any value out of this analysis or any of my videos, you should consider joining my Discord chat. It is a community of traders where I post my weekly watch list as well as all of my daily technical analysis. So when I look at a chart or I compare some companies, I post it in my Discord chat for everybody to see. And if you're interested in any of that, it is $5 per month. I would love to have you there. And I'm trying to build a community of traders that want to build each other up, share their resources and share their trade ideas. So if that sounds like 
like you, you should definitely check out the links below. And in summary, I like Airbnb. I think I am going to be getting in on the IPO. I think it will be a long-term hold for me unless I see a swing trading opportunity. But I do like this business model. I like the segment they are in and I like everything about it. However, I am going to be very wary and I'm going to keep very up to date on the COVID and vaccine news because I think it will have a large impact on this stock. But if you guys got any value out of this video, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. I sincerely appreciate it and it really helps me grow my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great time trading and good luck.